Mike Briggs is our cattle market analyst this week. The USDA's July cattle inventory report shows the total number of cattle and calves in the U.S. is up 2% from a year ago. It was the first July increase since 2006. The agency's cattle on feed report released the same day tallied Nebraska's inventory as the highest since tracking began in 1994. We talked with Mike Wednesday morning and started by asking about the expansion in July's inventory report. Not really to me because if you just look at the economics of the retention of a heifer and turn her into a cow and the return on the cows right now, it doesn't surprise me. We had lots of green grass, lots of opportunity there for people to retain heifers or buy cows and that's kind of what's going on. So the, the fact that the inventory went up didn't really surprise me at all. What does it mean long term for the industry in terms of rebuilding the herd? <sighs> Great question. Well, we've done it in two pretty big chunks here last year and this year. So you're getting pretty close and it I think that that margin in that, it, that segment of the industry is going to narrow and that'll slow down. I, I, I anticipate it'll slow down. It's going to give us more supply of feeders as we go forward and anytime you have supply, well, price is going to go down eventually. In that, sorry, go ahead. No. I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I apologize for my manners. In that cattle on feed report released the same day, we saw that Nebraska's inventory was the highest July 1 on record since 1994 when they began tracking the data. Does that surprise you at all? That did surprise me because as you look around here, we have some empty pens. I understand a lot of other people have empty pens. I had at least a thousand head of cattle run by me Monday for sale and every single one of them penciled out a $200 head loser. So I don't see anybody filling up real soon, although somebody's buying those cattle at that, that, way, that way. But it's pretty shocking to me that there's that many cattle on feed this time of year because typically there isn't. Yeah, the last time we talked, you were hoping that maybe we were approaching a seasonal low in the markets, but it doesn't appear that hit. I think we maybe did last okay. week. I think we put in the seasonal low. I think we're done with that. Um, now, how far and how fast we go is going to be the, the thing. I don't know how far we can go because part of the reason we're in the problem we are today is we got too high to begin with. The prices in the retail case are just horrific. We've got terrible export demand and export demand is not going to change in my mind until you see a change with the dollar. And I don't think you're going to see a change in the dollar until they raise interest rates and I don't think they're going to because I don't think, I, I think the ice under our economy is a little thin. So that was long winded, but I, I just don't, I don't see it. So. What's happened here is because we got prices too high, as they say, the cure for high prices is high prices. So we've got this down now, and the good thing about that now is the retailer has huge margins. Beef is 8% cheaper than it was last year, yet retail prices are 10% higher. So you've got a pretty good margin in there. And as we've talked about for years, most beef moves on feature. Well, there hasn't been any beef featuring forever because it's been too high. Well, now you've got a, a a supermarket that's got a margin, he can start featuring and we'll, I think we'll start seeing some more beef move and we'll pick some demand up as we go forward. But I don't think you're ever going to see the prices that we saw previously. Those market prices, how are they affecting margins? There's huge lo losses going on in the feed art, feed art industry right now and it's probably been going on since the middle of June and they got large this month in July. You know, there's a lot of two, $300 losers. So you're losing a lot of that equity that you built up over the last 18 months in a pretty big hurry. And I fear if we don't adjust a little bit here, we're, we're gonna have a problem. How has heat affected performance in the feedlot? You know, if you were prepared for it like we were, where we have sprinklers or you have shade, I think you got through it okay. If you did not have shade and you were in part of the state that didn't have any wind on some of those days, there were some fairly significant losses and that's, that's always disappointing. Luckily, I think the heat may be over for a little bit or at least the severe heat, so that'll be good. 